Okay, so here we have what we did earlier. This is on the watercolour paper. Um, very beautiful detail. And you do get that kind of uh, mix of grey to white. And then we did the, the tri sugar paper. So I guess just a case of trying out what you have in the house. I found when I did this on the sugar paper that photographing it was quite interesting. It, it looked ethereal and almost ghost-like um, because all the little light and shade, I wasn't really photographing with uh, top equipment, I was just using my phone, it showed up but actually it gave a really interesting effect. And I tried it on this card, which is lovely as well and has its merit. It the leaves tend to stand out a little bit. They, they sit on rather than sink down into the watercolour. But I'm actually really pleased with that and I think I'll be using this book for practice runs or even finished pieces. So let's get started on our finished piece. So this is the Stonehenge Aqua Cold Press paper and I'll leave details at the end of the class and all the materials. So, let's get rid of that. I'm just going to use the Winter and Newton. Um, I might put a little bit of the watercolour down. But you know what, I think even poster paints would work with this and if you have children in the house it's a real child friendly thing to do. Um, my two-year-old great-nephew had a go at this on white paper because they didn't have any black paper in the house and uh, he made up a birthday card for his grandma, my mum. So it's really very simple but very relaxing to do and that's why I really was very excited about doing this class for you. So I think I will start with some large leaves in that kind of filigree effect that we had going on. So it was these leaves. And if I take the big one back from the practice sheet, I think I might start with this one. So I just used the cloth to place the leaf on too, but you can use kitchen roll whatever you have to hand. Okay. So, like a bit split at the end, but it doesn't matter because nature isn't perfect and is beautiful because of it. As are we. So, let's get going. I'm going to add a little bit more water. This is quite runny, but I want that kind of filigree, very delicate style because I have an inkling that it might work well in terms of layering. So uh, let's see, <laughs> we'll find out won't we? <laughs> and I'll, uh, I'll let you know if my idea that I have in my head, which is a very loose one because I didn't want to come in with uh, knowing exactly what I wanted to do, I wanted us to do this together. So, let's have a go with this one, see what happens. I tend to start top left, don't ask me why, don't know, but I love starting here when I'm doing designs. I might actually do it this way. Place it down, get your deli paper on top, finger down that mid vein, out to the edges. See if I've put enough water on this for a delicate one. That's very beautiful, isn't it? I'm not even sure what this is from because I got it. Um, I always have leaves and flowers in various little pots around the house. 
and I can't remember where I got this from. But if anybody knows, please let me know. And uh, in the meantime, I shall try. What's it called? Some sort of, there's an app, isn't there, that you can use to identify leaves. It will come to me. Right. Um, I think I'll have one going up into the corner, the right corner there. So what I'm doing here, I, I really just only have a vague plan. Um, I like to start with kind of a foundation, if you like, so that I feel something's there and then I can kind of add to it. So that's very pretty as well. A little too much paint for my liking on this one, but you'll see as it dries, it turns to, these will stay white here, but a lot of this will turn to a grey. You can see this already happening here. Very, very beautiful. So let me try adding a little bit more water. Start in the middle of the leaf. This is a, something I found out because if you've got very wet paint on the edges, it tends to bleed out a little bit. Um, so try and avoid that and just do the edges last. The other thing is that you can go in and uh, take up a little of the paint if you like. So I'm sticking with the idea that odd numbers are really good for our brains. So one, two, let's go here. A bit higher than I thought I wanted, but no, that's all right. There we go. Doesn't matter which way round you have your deli paper. Not really. There's a shiny side and there's a more matte finish. I guess the one advantage I've just realised is on the shiny side that it might just go out of the edges a little bit more. Where if, it is, if it's on the other side, it, uh, it might soak it up a little. But let's not get too bothered about the little details. Because it's the overall effect that we're going for here. And the process, really, rather than a finished article. So you can see already these two are turning that beautiful grey. The advantage of the watercolour paper is this, because what's happening is that that white, very washy white paint is being absorbed into the paper and sinking down. If you like layering, I personally like this paper because of that. It, it kind of pushes the leaves into the background a little bit more and then you can layer with thicker paint on top, different kind of styles of leaves. Just don't even think about it, just feel. I think that's the main kind of image here is feeling and not worrying too much about whether something is right or wrong. It's all right. It's all right. So, hmm. I might try, because I was saying earlier about access to leaves, um, I might try some house plants. I don't know the name of this one. It's very pretty. I'll again probably find that out at some point. It's got these tiny little hairs on the end. It's really gorgeous. Um, you can do an easier version of this and <laughs> plonk it down that way, which would definitely make it easier. You could even p pinch that little stem off. I'm going to try and lie it this way and live dangerously. Let's let's have a go. I just want to kind of uh, get things down and not worry about this, not worry about what's going on. Have I placed things correctly? Should that have been bigger, smaller, whatever? Um, let's just really sink into enjoying it. I might overlay this a little bit here. So, this is quite different to ones I've done in the past because I normally start with the larger leaves, but I just want to see what these little houseplant leaves do. 
because they are very, very pretty. Oh, that's nice. That is nice because what we've got here, and you'll find this with, with leaves, some leaves are slightly waxier than others and when you put the paint on it beads up like this and I think that's just gorgeous, absolutely beautiful. So I'm just going to put a few of these down again in different places and just go with the feel. I mean some of you artists will have uh, been painting for a lot longer than me and will have more ideas about how to use this technique I'm sure and I would love to uh, to hear about what those are and how you've used it. Um, let's go here. Of course here it's obvious but we are using the uh, underside of the leaf because the veins stick out a lot more and you get really nice uh, contact with the paper. That's very sweet as well. So I'm going to just put another down. I would say here, hmm, it's uh, it's probably like coconut milk. That's what it looks like. That kind of consistency. Um, same colour as well. So. And actually, I was I was separating that out, but it's really nice when you get a little over overlay of a leaf like that. So I'm going to see if I can put it down like that because it kind of really looks more organic and as nature would have it. So let's see how that turns out. Just rubbing the stems and the mid rib there of each little leaf. Let's have a look at that. Look at this up from this leaf because it's already sticking up. Yep, love that. I'm going to do maybe something in between those. Maybe go back to this one that we used earlier. Just put some kind of, I don't know, something like that. Let's have a look. I might actually make the paint slightly thicker now because I'm just wondering how much it will work um, in terms of layering. It'd be really interesting. I've got the kind of filigree ones in the background and then you know, kind of more opaque ones in the foreground. So I think that would work really well. It certainly works well if you then go on to form it into a surface pattern design or you just want to photograph it and process it. Um, if you do that you'll find that this watercolour paper in particular uh, photographs really well once you've got the light situation sorted out because that is quite difficult with black paper. But you find that the black becomes very deep and um, it really brings out each layer. I guess like you're looking into a forest, seeing trees from a distance and then the ones closer to you. This is going off the page and I like that because don't like it being too confined. It's not how nature is. So let's have a look at that. Oh, that's really pretty. Yeah, I like that a lot. Quite happy with that. So I think I'm going to place maybe three of those. I mean, that's a paint I need to top up. Don't forget the little uh, stem bit. You don't have to be <laughs> too precise here, as you can see I'm just slapping on the paint. Um, it is so, so simple and I'm going to be 
showing the photographs from my great nephew at the end of the class and what he did. So pretty. Um, okay, I'm just going to change over my sheet here so I don't get any splodges of paint. I'm also going to try a holly flop. <laughs> well, <laughs> I've devised this way of flopping the leaves down so that they kind of land flat. Let's see if it works. Yay! <laughs> so you can try that. <laughs> Let me know how you get on. Oops, got a little bit of seepage there. Let's see what happens with that. It really doesn't matter though, does it? Because today is all about feeling, not thinking. Not even thinking about the next leaf down. Just going with intuition. Actually that looks that looks really nice and I quite like the fact that this is very opaque on the edges. If you wanted to, you see here it's it's a little bit short on the stem. Get your uh, wash brush, I think these are called wash brushes, um, and just straight straight down like this. Just add a little bit of paint like that. And you can do that for all of them. It, it's entirely up to you though. My hands tend to shake until I actually make contact with the paper. Not sure what that's about. There we go. So let's carry on. I like this leaf. I'm going to do another one. And I'm going to keep it fairly opaque like that because it's adding texture and I really like that. Variety is the spice of life and so if we can get a variety of leaf shape and a variety of uh, thickness of paint and how they, how they react to the paper itself then I think it really adds to the effectiveness of the whole piece. Try a holly flop again from a different angle now so I'm not sure it will work but let's see. Uh, almost. <laughs> no, that's nice because I like that overlapping that leaf. Let's just press it down, get it in there, and again, if it folds over, it doesn't matter because uh, it makes it look really realistic, which it is because <laughs> it is a real leaf. That's what we're going for. So, hmm, do I do the stem? I forgot my stem again, but never mind. Just go in and touch that up a little bit. Very gentle. There we go, that will do. Okay, so I don't want to do too much more because you know you can do anything with yours, uh, anything goes. You could have tiny little uh, leaves all over. You could start with quite thick overlaid leaves and then kind of go out into just single leaves. I don't know if you've seen patterns, wallpapers like that. Um, I might try a beech leaf because I really like these and they kind of um, bead up as well and I really like that. I'm just going to add a little bit of the Windsor and Newton white gouache, a little bit of leaf there and on we go. So again for me I, and you know yours is going to be totally different and you'll be using what leaves you have and um, I want to keep this now a little bit more opaque even more than that maybe just to kind of add a bit of interest Okay. I wanted to show you actually just for people who have fine motor skill difficulties and um, sometimes I do myself um, there is a way of doing this so you're not using your fingers so much I'm going to plonk this in the middle and show you what I mean by that so say I lay, I lay that there I put that over but then I get some kitchen roll okay and then, I think these are called burnishes, are they? It says woody hanger. I'll leave you the details. 
and then this is much easier because you're not using those muscles in your fingers so much you just got to gently grip it or even just put your hand down like this and if you're getting tired <laughs> you can do this as well I think it's going to be effective I've tried it in the past let's have a look right oh lift the leaf off anyway yeah that worked really well so have a go at that it might save your fingers kids I think tend to just like to be hands-on and get in there but if you have kids with uh, motor difficulty um, this might help them as well you can just kind of press down on it and it's all done for them so let's have a look let's get this down here I love the uh, copper beech it's such a delicate leaf and they're all decided to be lifted up in one fell swoop there which is uh, quite handy <laughs> I'm going to try another house plant now which is one of my favourites and um, this is Danica um, it's got a Latin name as well, but I can't remember that. And, you know, if you're feeling adventurous, you could actually do the whole thing and just press it down. Do you want me to try that? Mm. Am I feeling adventurous? Do I want to risk? And the answer to that is always. Always. Let's have a go. Feeling daring today. And, you know... There are no mistakes. I truly, truly, I truly believe it. Um, I love making mistakes uh, because I love experimenting. So, yes, it can be frustrating if you've done like an hour on a piece and it's not turned out quite the way you wanted. But what did you learn? I mean, that's what I like. And I think also because I have not had any art training since I was... 17 and, uh, and I'm a little bit older than that now so my memory is uh, a little hazy <laughs> um, but I've always loved art and I've always been involved in it in some way throughout my life uh, but I'm a musician first and foremost and that's kind of taken up most of my attention and time over the years so art is an absolute gift. I cannot tell you how much it means to me to rediscover art. It's brought so much kind of daily joy to me um, and I know you feel the same way because there's just something extremely relaxing about it and extremely um, intuitive I guess. And it kind of allows us just to sink down and just forget what's going on. It's totally absorbing. And I love that about it. Really love that. Now, I'm not sure if I've covered this well enough, but we're about to find out. And I'm not going to worry too much about how it lands. I often turn my paper around, although I know this is fairly <laughs> going in that direction. Not bothered about that, but I, I like to turn it around just to see see it from a different perspective. So I'm going to just plonk this down over here. See what happens. Might need two pieces. Okay. Just going for it. <laughs> need a tiny bit more there. My right, leaves around my table are wanting to get in on the action. This is not going to be perfect by any means <laughs> but let's have a look well that's quite interesting yeah I like that I think because the leaves the stems are quite furry it's not kind of picked up a lot of the um, paint so where shall I go now it's a very hodgy podgy um, piece. It's not very coherent and I don't care because <laughs> I just wanted to share with you the technique. You will have 
plenty of ideas yourself on how to use this. This is, um, I tend to be, I've not tried this, I'm picking leaves here that are not really picking up on the paint. So rather than have to go in and try and solve that problem, I'm going to choose a different leaf. I know this one works and is very pretty. This is the one that we used in our test run. Just I'm peeling a couple of the leaves there. So let's try this. Yeah, that's better. And you'll find that some leaves just don't want to be messed with. I'll try and separate out those a little bit. Okay. Get the, get the stalk in there, Holly. Right. I'm going to go for the edges because I don't want to uh, forget those. This one's going this way, going up to here. This is up to here. So I just want to have it running in opposite directions, maybe somewhere here. I'm not going to mess with this leaf or any of those leaves. I'm just going to put my palm down to make it stick to the paper and then go in with, the, with your fingers. No better tool, really, than your fingers. Right, let's see. Yeah, I like that. So I'm just going to place a few more down. Um, I don't want to risk boring you too much by having a really, really lengthy video because I could do this like all day and uh, I think that might be a little bit of overkill if I did that. So. I'm going to try to speed up just a little bit now. Get some of these down. I want to put this over here. It's a little floppy and a bit harder to deal with, but they're very pretty. for a short time. I don't want to do that too, it looks a bit too echoey. Um, let me see what we have over here. This is actually a coffee leaf. Now this I know will be very simple because the, the little veining won't be picked up, but let's have a go at it. I've not tried this before, so, but I have tried similar leaves. They're very simple, they just come out with the main stem. and the large ones going out. But let's have a look and see what it looks like. Why not? Got nothing to lose, so let's go for it. A little bit of thick paint on this one, I think. Right. Okay, so here. <laughs> I just went in there because I was afraid it was going to move. Doesn't matter. And I think it might have bled on the Let's see. That's not bad. It's interesting. It adds, adds a bit of texture. I do want to at the edge. I think it actually works well if you get in there with thicker paint. They've all got their own little characters and uh, the only way really to know is to just do it and keep practicing and, but only if it's fun. Right. Harder work this one. <laughs> Grapple it into submission there we go. Right. Actually that one's come out really nicely. I, I really do like that. Just adds that little bit of texture. 
The other thing you can do is while it's still got a little bit on, I'm not sure it'll work with that one, but um, say we use this is we've already printed with this, and it's a tiny bit of uh, paint left on. You can always just go in and it has a nice delicate feel like the filigree effect. And if you do it so it's slightly off the page there. It just brings the whole thing in, but also it, it allows it to breathe, I guess. That's what it feels like to me. It's all in here, but it also expands out beyond the confines of the paper. And I might just put another little one up in the top there. I'm just now finishing off. Um, like I said, I could carry on all day doing this. I absolutely love it. It's very tactile very relaxing, very simple but effective and I really love that in art. I'm really interested in, in things like that. I'm interested in using a brush. You see here now, um, when I do the extra tutorial, tutorial at the end, I'll show you, you can actually just fill that in. I'm not, I haven't got the right brush but you could you can actually paint the rest of this in if you wanted, like that. And I haven't done this before, I'm just uh, totally winging it, but I'm just seeing if that works. Yeah, kind of. So <clears throat> anything like this that needs touching up, that's not really well done, but I'm not going to go into it now. I'm going to show you, briefly just show you with this brush, I'm going to show you how to do this um, in that extra tutorial. Okay, so don't worry too much about that. You could overprint it actually when it's dry as well. So, maybe do another one up there. Running out of paint, which is a sign that I've perhaps outstayed my welcome and it's time to wrap it up. So just now going round the edges. There is so much more you can do to this. You could carry on for a while. And if you go to the extra tutorials, that will show you um, a few tips and techniques that you can go on to uh, to use on this project. So if you wanted to go a little bit further and bring out some detail and check that out. Okay, we're nearly there. Let me put one there. Almost finished. I'm really glad that I didn't have an actual project in mind when I did this. I really wanted it just to be about us all experiencing it together and just um, finding out as you go along each characteristic of each leaf. I'm just going to now do very kind of simple leaf prints and the tiny bits here that are black just to kind of add a bit of texture. I'm sure that's got paint on it, I haven't. I am really just um, like a child in this moment. Just not worrying at all about the outcome. Because each time you do this is going to be very different. Right, I'm going to just show you how you can do this. Um, there's that leaf, yeah. So you can just go in again. I'm now into the <laughs> last little tiny bits of uh, paint here. A little blob of Daniel Smith watercolour there. So. We just go over this leaf. I would prefer it to be slightly thicker, but I'm just using up the 
the last of the paint that we have here. Okay, so we place this down in roughly the same area. Well done, Holly. <laughs> we should be able to overprint that. Um, be slightly more texturized, but we don't want it to be perfect. Nature isn't perfect, we're not perfect, and that's the beauty of it and us. So, there, <laughs> okay. I'm just going to do some little tiny finishing touches, and then that's us finished. You obviously would carry on, but I'm going to stop there. I'm really happy with that. And I'll be showing you how to do more in, in the extra tutorial at the end. But I hope you've had fun and you've really relaxed into this. <laughs>